we're talking about the lives of voters here. Voters, people who in three weeks' time will be casting a vote. I just want to break. We're in Christchurch today, my hometown. As everyone knows, Christchurch was devastated by an earthquake about six and a half years ago. Soon afterwards, the government and the city council announced a series of projects aimed at revitalising the city. Some of those have already been completed. There's a great playground named after Margaret Mahi that opened two years ago. The bus exchange has been opened for more than two years, just down the road, Hagley Oval. A local cricket ground opened in record time four years ago. And of course, there have been plenty of new bars and restaurants and cool spaces that have opened up in the meantime too. However, there's still a lot that's yet to be completed. The city was supposed to be getting a new stadium worth about $500 million. It was supposed to be getting a massive convention center for a similar price, but it's just a two block construction site at the moment. The government first said that would open in 2017. Now it's 2020. A new sports center hasn't started being built yet. Neither has a performing arts precinct. Then there's the cathedral, a massive icon of the city, still in the center of a nasty tug of war. So we're going to ask young people if they enjoy living in the city and whether or not they think local and central government has done a good job. If you think the uh, city still needs something, what do, you, what do you think that is? Maybe more of a central hub for younger people. Um, I suppose it's getting quite businessy, which is good, um, but yeah, more creative, creative side of things would be cool. The cafe's opened up pretty fast. There's some pubs and nightlife still lacking compared to what it used to be like? Just not many green spaces, just lots of big corporate buildings and all the kind of like cool stuff, you know, little malls and stuff is kind of not as many small businesses as, as I'd like. It's kind of like disguised. Sure. <laughs> like big businesses under like the guise of like cool stuff aimed at pretty much my age group. Oh, like it's all right. The bars are like, I don't know. The bars are kind of average, I think. Like the, there was a main one, but it got shut down like, last year. Irishman. The Irishman, oh, which yeah. like all our students used to go to quite a bit. Watching it over the last few years sort of develop into what it is, it's been quite exciting. I quite like what they've done with it. A lot of people complain, but I think they are doing a good job. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not saying that can be done overnight, but I think it's coming along quite nicely. I'll do the best I can, though I'm just, thank you, a simple right. man. Marcia Butterfield created Neat Places, an online guide to the best Christchurch has to offer more than six years ago because she was sick of hearing people say there was nothing to do in the city. She says she loves how Christchurch has evolved since then. It has come a long way since the dark years of 2011, 2012 and 2013 but um, yeah it's a very slow process but it's very encouraging seeing little pockets pop up around Town. What I love about Christchurch is that there's always something to look forward to. Is Christchurch a cool place for a young person to live and grow up in? I think Christchurch is a really cool place to be if you are wanting to start a business because I just feel like it's a very encouraging place that's very supportive. Like pre-earthquake, pre I think if you opened up a, a cafe, it would be like, oh yeah, it's just another cafe. But every new opening is like a massive deal and so I think you've got the real support of the community um, whether it's like a little kind of a skincare brand or if it's a you know a national kind of restaurant chain or something like anything I just feel like this is the place to be if you are young you want to start a business Zion Toamiti is a community worker who works predominantly with youth on the east side of the city one of the big issues is uh, like the youth of the east side um, seeing hope in politics or just seeing some kind of a voice for them, like for them to be able to look to leaders and, and see that they actually are um, pushing for issues that, that affect the change for our youth. What are those issues? Um, some of them around, uh, mostly around mental health. Um, yeah, yeah, helplessness and a bit of disconnect. I reckon that some of the kids are, are, are feeling a little bit lost, you know, in terms of um, where to next, you know, for the city and for the families and for the side of town. How have you seen the rebuild go over the past few years, um, especially on this side of the city? Pretty slow, to be honest. Just some of the trauma the kids have gone through, you know, moving from, from place to place and... Um, just all the stresses from, from the earthquake, I think. Um, I mean, it's not the only reason. Um, there are existing issues 
um, for our for our people, but um, at the same time, I think it didn't doesn't help, you know. Greg has just turned 18 and says he definitely plans to vote in three weeks' time. What are the type of issues that uh, you think people around here care most about? Um, mental health is a big factor in the east side of Christchurch and Christchurch as a whole. You've seen that in your life? Yeah, so, yeah, we've all... Uh, we had a concert a few days ago and we asked people who here has experienced anyone that's passed away due to suicide or anxiety and depression and everyone knew someone. They all had a connection to them. So obviously, if they can see it, then it's evident throughout our whole region and Christchurch as well. Do you feel like uh, a lot of young people around here truly believe that politics can positively influence their lives? I don't know if they um, even understand politics, you know. I think um, we're not educated in politics at sc in, on the school level. And so even from my own um, journey, like, I didn't really learn about politics till, till I was about 30 or 28, 29. Or like how you can actually be a part of it and part of change. I think of one of them life growing affirmations to say, but I reckon don't say anything. We head south tomorrow, but before then we wanted to come to Cathedral Square to check out this Hikoyan rally where people are protesting against poverty and inequality in Christchurch and New Zealand. Um, I came in with my dad, he actually wanted to come in together for, we're um, spending time together for Father's Day and it's just important for both of us, uh, it's a good world for the future for my kids, his grandkids. What are the issues that brought you out here? Um, poverty and homelessness are definitely big ones. They're, big ones that really need to be addressed this election and it's important that the politicians hear that we think it's important. I guess the, the real failure of our government to address issues of inequality and poverty um, and it's something that I see in my community every day. Poverty, um, housing and inequality and all together they're sort of inextricably linked right and I think there are things that we can do as a society together that we can actually achieve real change and that's what we need man.